Today, Jonathan goes on a wild goosefish chase in search of a really weird fish. Welcome to Jonathan Bird's Blue World. If there's one thing I love, it's weird fish. I've traveled all over the world to see frogfish, seahorses, and batfish. But today, I've come to the New England Aquarium to meet one of the weirdest and coolest fish in the world. There you go. I'm meeting up with cameraman Bill, part-time Blue World cameraman and full-time professional aquarist. Hey Bill, thanks for having me back to the aquarium to check out this amazing fish. Absolutely, it's always glad to have you back. I just love goosefish. I think this is one of the coolest fish in the world. They are one of my favorites because they are like an amazing animal with amazing abilities and they're such an odd looking fish. So the basic morphology, flattened and camouflaged and they lay in the sand and they're ambush predators and they've got a lure. Right. And so they're just trying to lure the prey in and what kind of prey would they lure in? Uh, generally speaking, they kind of go for a fish but they could also go for a squid or anything else like that. Um, but the larger ones, you can see this is a kind of a small one, they can get much bigger. And the larger ones have been known to take down ducks and geese. So in really shallow water. Right. Interesting. A lot, of, a lot of ducks and geese dive down to find fish or chase after and pick off things. Um, so when they dive down, these guys in the shallows and they just take them down whole. And their mouth is just full of needle-like teeth. It's yeah. like, you're not getting out of that mouth. The cool thing about their teeth also is all their teeth are angled inwards. So that way when something does get in, there's no backing out of it. It's just one way to go and that's down <laughs> in. It's going down the hatch. <laughs> so this one's only about a foot long, but how big do they get? They can get up close to five feet long. Um, the heads can be about two, two feet wide. They can be very big fish, very big mouths. So you can eat a really big bite. Yeah. <laughs> very neat. And how do you feed these guys? Um, because they're down here in the, in the tank, but I have a little, take a little fish on a stick and it'll dangle it in the water kind of above them and once they start luring for the fish then I kind of drag it over top of them and kind of wiggle it around like I'm a live fish and boom they open their mouths real quick just take it whole wow and there we go well in 29 years of diving I've only seen one goose fish and it was about 25 years ago but I heard a rumor that they saw three of them in the sand around a shipwreck out in Stellwagen Bank last week. That's so I think it's our opportunity. Absolutely. I would love to see these things in the wild, so I am absolutely game to go check this well, out. Well, let's go diving. All right. Three weeks later. Well, it's the moment of truth. I am super excited, but also really nervous. I hope we can find this fish. Hey, Matt. In Gloucester, Massachusetts, I meet up with Captain Matt Marcoux, who runs the Daybreaker dive boat. I'm joining a dive trip to Stellwagen Bank. We're heading to the wreck of the Patriot, a fishing boat which capsized and sank in 2009, about 15 miles southeast of Gloucester. We leave Gloucester Harbor on a beautiful summer morning. a 90 minute ride to the wreck so cameraman Bill and I use the time to get our gear set up and ready. When we reach the wreck, mate Michael McDonald and his dive buddy are the first ones in the water. They have to set the anchor before the rest of the divers go in. Once everything's all set, they send up a marker with good news. Ha ah. <laughs> ha, they found some! Bill and I are wearing dry suits for this dive. This is my favorite part of putting on a dry suit, right here. 
Oh, yeah. The seal's starting to get a little worn out, so it's not that painful. <laughs> Hopefully it won't leak. Even though the surface water is up to 60 degrees Fahrenheit, the wreck is deep. On the bottom, we will be working in 45 degree water. That's definitely cold. The sea is flat calm as we hit the ocean. With our cameras in hand, Bill and I make the long descent down the anchor line to the wreck. We pass through a thermocline, the boundary layer between different temperatures. The water is swirly and makes our vision blurry. We emerge below it into icy cold water, but at least the visibility is better. Like most wrecks, the Patriot has become an impressive artificial reef. This boat, which used to be used for capturing fish, is now a haven for fish. It's overgrown with hydroids, sponges, and anemones, and harbors thousands of pollock, cunner, and cod. Where there is a reef attracting marine life, nearby there are always predators hoping to take advantage of the situation. Out on the sand, sculpin, hoping for some small fish to come by. The sculpin, however, are both hunter and hunted. They're not the only predators lurking around the wreck. Even with the bright light supplied by my camera system, the goosefish is exceptionally well hidden in the shallow depression it dug in the sandy seafloor. It waits patiently for prey to come close. Fleshy tassels all around the edges of its body help to disguise its shape. Even the mouth has camouflage between the teeth. It lays perfectly still, breathing only once or twice a minute, exhaling through concealed gill openings. All it takes is for one fish to come within striking distance. As they get closer, the goosefish begins flicking its lure. This is a fish going fishing. A hake comes close, wandering around the seafloor while using its chemosensitive whiskers called barbels, to hunt for food and sense predators. The goosefish doesn't move a muscle. That was a close one. As I continue to film, other potential meals approach the goosefish. It finally makes a move. But that hake is just too big for this small goosefish. its position has been revealed, or perhaps in response to an annoying guy with a camera, the goosefish decides to relocate. It's not exactly a graceful swimmer.
could spend hours down here filming goosefish, but at this depth, over 100 feet, we have very limited time before decompression obligations start to add up. So it's time for Bill and I to head back up the anchor line. At 15 feet, we spend a few minutes doing a safety decompression stop in the warm surface water and celebrate having finally filmed a goosefish in its natural habitat. I do love weird fish. The goosefish is flat and camouflaged like a tasseled wobegong shark, but it has a lure like a frogfish. It has concealed gill openings like a batfish, but uses sand for camouflage like a flounder. The goosefish truly may be the weirdest and coolest fish in the blue world.